Hey, welcome to hell. Welcome to hell. One, two. We're just gonna, just what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna walk up just a little ways up this hill, not way up this hill. And we're gonna go to an important tomb up here. Follow me where I'm coming, look where I'm going. Pretty much to the level that we're going. This mud pile right here. So if you come on this side of the manure and the mud, wouldn't be doing this just for the heck of it. Ooh, that's pure manure. That's okay, we've got shoes. Yeah. We were raised on a farm, no problem. I hope this is worth it. <laughs> well, just yes. try not to spend a long time here. Yeah, yeah. We don't need because yeah. this place is now used for horses. Yeah, here let the people in and then we'll look at it. And, and we'll drop dealers even. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, um, okay um, let them in. Yeah, oh, sorry. Come in. <laughs> Hurry up, but can't get in. <laughs> okay, so as the rest of you are making your way in here, just let me start explaining to people. First of all, what when does this tomb date to? <sighs> when you see niches. Look, look, do you see niches anywhere? Um, yeah, first bodies? century. First century, very good. Now, if you look above you, that's the largest rosette found in the country, carved into the ceiling. If you look here and here, this is a depiction of the temple. You see the um, cherub on either side. And you see this is this is a monumental tomb. That's a temple. And we know whose tomb this is. Yesterday we were at Masada, and remember I was pointing out to you the siege wall that goes around Masada and that there was one around Jerusalem. And we have parts of, it, of the siege wall around Jerusalem. Come on in so that people can get in. And, uh, okay, so Josephus tells us that that siege wall that the Romans built came down the Hinnom Valley, up on the lip of the Hinnom Valley, down to the tomb of Annas. The high priest that tried Jesus. And then up the Kidron Valley. Okay, so this is the tomb of Annas, who tried Jesus. Now listen, think about this. This is a high priest of the Jews. His tomb is used as a manure pit to hold horses today. I want you to contrast this with the, the, the tomb of David, where we just were, and then especially with the tomb of Jesus. Jesus. It goes, Annas' tomb is down here, literally in hell, in the, in the Gehenna. <laughs> then David's tomb is higher, and then Jesus' tomb is higher still. People from all over the world go to the tomb of Jesus to see the tomb of Jesus, mm -hmm. the one who was tried by Annas, the high priest, and, and also Caiaphas, if you'll remember. Nobody but horses come here. And us. <laughs> okay, think about where we were. 
We're going to be on the Temple Mount on Sunday morning. That's what, after our day off. That's the first place we'll go is the Temple Mount. I want you to contrast the Temple Mount to where we are now. We are in the lowest place in Jerusalem. Okay, and the contrast between the Temple Mount and this place was again symbolic of being in Yahweh's presence, heaven, up on the Temple Mount, and being completely separated from God's presence down here in Gehenna. Okay. The, this area here is Gehenna. It's where the Hinnom Valley, it's the deepest part of the Hinnom Valley. Gehenna comes from, valley is it, 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 Gah or Gay, you know, Gehenna. So Hinnom, it, it's the Aramaic of the Hebrew. For the... Okay, now we have to cover some tough stuff here. Okay. Here's a, here's a psalm, Psalm 106, 36. First of all, let me just read this, that uh, there was a law. It's in Leviticus 18, 21. Here it is. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am Yahweh. Sound like a reasonable law? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's what happens if you do. Say to the Israelites, any Israelite or any foreigner reading in, uh, residing in Israel, who sacrifices any of his children to Moloch is to be put to death. The members of the community are to stone him. Sound reasonable? Would you expect a God who is just to have any other law? Okay. Then we saw up there that Solomon built on this hill right here. This is the hill of offense. He built these altars to his foreign wives. Here's the results of the Israelites. This is speaking, this is Psalm 106, speaking of the Israelites. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was desecrated by their blood. Hmm. Okay, now, here we go. He, speaking, this is 2 Chronicles 28.3, he, speaking of Ahaz, this is Hezekiah's father, Ahaz burned sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and sacrificed his children in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations Yahweh had driven out before the Israelites. Okay? Look. <clears throat> Here's a picture, and we're going to cover this, of a sacrificed child found through archaeology. I myself have excavated a child sacrifice. This is a baby in a jar. You can see the skeletal remains burned. Mm. These have been found by the multiple, multiple hundreds. Actually, well, I should say thousands. There's one cemetery alone at Carthage from the Phoenicians where they found over 10,000 sacrificed children. The plaques of the priests sacrificing the children. Okay. Okay, so we're going to finish the teaching that we were up there. So Ahaz burned sacrifices in the valley of Ben Hinnom and sacrifices children in the fire. Okay. Hezekiah is the king. Ahaz is his father, but Hezekiah is probably not his firstborn son. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then we have this mighty deliverance that we read about earlier up at the broad wall. Right? And then Hezekiah's son is Manasseh. Oh, listen to this. Second Chronicles 33. This kind of plan. He sacrificed his children in the fire in the valley of Ben Hinnom. It's poisonous. Manasseh led Judah and the people of Jerusalem astray so that they did more evil. They did more evil than the nations Yahweh had destroyed before the Israelites. Now listen to me. I want you to get this. Okay? We were up in the in David's palace where Yahweh gave David a promise that through your offspring your house will endure forever this 
is what the house of David did with their offspring. Certain members of the house of David. Is there any way that you could slap Yahweh in the face more than that? And yet he has mercy and he keeps his promise. Listen to this. This is a familiar story to you. To you. This is what Yahweh says. Jeremiah 19. Go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Take along some of the elders of the people and of the priests and go out to the valley of ben Hinnom. This is what Yahweh Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I am going to bring disaster on this place. That will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. For they have forsaken me and made this a place of foreign gods. They have burned incense in it to gods that neither they nor their ancestors nor the kings of Judah ever knew. And they filled this place with the blood of the innocent. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their children in the fire as offerings to Baal something I did not command or mention, nor did it enter my mind. Then you remember the rest of the story? He takes the pot, where? He, he takes the pot from the potters. He comes down here from probably the temple with the elders down here. He's, he gives the reason why they're down here. He takes the pot, he smashes it on the ground and prophesies, this is what God is going to do to this city because of the sin that was committed in this place. Um, and then you just saw as we walked down where they, one of the many places that they've excavated, the Babylonian destruction layer that is over Jerusalem. Now here's the number one argument, especially against uh, the Old Testament, but against the Bible in, in general. The argument is God is mean. He's just mean. Look at what he's doing. He's just wiping out people. He's just wiping out a city. Uh, whether a punishment is just depends on the crime. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you go home and you find out that your neighbor is in uh, prison and on death row and you find out that they, they stole the candy bar, you would think that would be unjust, right? But if they burn their children in a fire, then I don't think that you would think that was unjust. The, the crime fits the punishment. And, um, and then here's the, the bizarre thing to think about, is that right up there, God the Father so loved the world that He gave His only Son who became the perfect sacrifice for sins so that we would get grace, not what we deserve, but mercy. 